welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, True For You Fitness. It is Dan here, and today's episode is all about um, how we're lazy. <laughs> By the way, I just trimmed my beard. Check it out. It's a little bit more... <sighs> hey, Wendy! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, truth be told, honestly, almost everybody I met is lazy in some type of way, right? We all kind of beat ourselves up for it. So, me and Wendy, she's doing her hair right now, but me and Wendy are going to be walking around with you today, showing you how we do the least amount possible to improve our health. In truth, everything that you need, or that you think you need, you really already have. But the analogy I like to use with people is, you have all these tools, you have all of the tools in fact, but if you have a garage full of tools that you never learned how to use, you can't fix the car, you can't build the shed, you can't do the things that you want to do with the tools if you're never taught how to use them properly or if you're not even using them at all. And that's really what our program is all about, our 90 day program. So stick around and check out this next clip. That's awesome. We are walking to the supermarket right now to get some veggies and some fruit to make tonight so we can cook our own food. So when Dan says that we're lazy, we're not actually lazy where we don't do anything with our day. We just try to find the most, I guess like minimal thing that we could do throughout the day consistently. Yes, yeah, so what I call the least dosage for effectiveness. That's what you're aiming for. That's kind of what we do. But if you looked at what we did, if we wrote it down on paper, you would say they're not doing anything. <laughs> and most people would consider that to be pretty lazy, especially for fitness people. Yeah. So it's all about kind of redefining what it means in your head to you. Yeah. You know, your belief systems really dictate your actions and ultimately how healthy you are. So the supermarket is about half a mile away, so that's a total mile walk. actually get into moving for the day. Um, so we're gonna show you our favorite shake to make with fruits and veggies and we just went down nine flights of stairs. So I mean we're getting in our movement, we're getting in some nutrients so easily because we're not really thinking about it, it's not processed, and it's just part of our day-to-day -day life. So let's go, let's go to the supermarket. Let me not get hit by a car. I'm real about getting hit by a car. So what do I mean by lazy? Obviously from the looks of it, from the outside, if you look at me and Wendy, we're traveling around the world, we're staying in good shape, we're staying healthy, we have a business, a fitness business. How could anybody be lazy and do that? Well, the truth of the matter is, like I said before, everybody really has some type of lazy quality. We're on a kind of a spectrum. Now sure, there's the A-type personality that's just go, 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 go. But when it comes to, say, their health, they might be lazy versus their business. Or they might be really active with their kids, but not so much with some other type of thing that they want to improve on. So it's about looking at your life as kind of a spectrum and seeing not you know, whether you're better or worse, but just kind of how can we move the needle just a little bit. Another way to say that is, if you are lazy, just seek out the easiest things possible. The problem that I've seen over my 12 year coaching career is that when something's too easy, ironically, people don't want to do it because they don't think it's going to make a big enough impact. So we're going to show you exactly what we do in a given day just to keep a baseline of health. I call this the seatbelt method, right? It's like every time you get in the car, whether you're driving across country or whether you're driving just down the street to the grocery store, you always put on your seatbelt. It's just kind of a baseline precaution that you take. Same thing here with health and fitness. You know, um, we don't want to go to the gym every day, or ever really. I haven't been to the gym in over a year. Wendy hasn't been either. Um, so how do we get movement? How do we eat food? How do we de-stress? How do we kind of open up our awareness and get bigger perspective on life so that we can actually make progress? Especially when it's hard, because you know, I have news for you, unfortunately. Most people become more busy as they grow older. They become more stressed as they grow older, unfortunately. So the game's only gonna get harder. So how are we gonna be able to do this? And if you're in your 20s right now, or your 30s, or even your 40s or 50s, you're at a huge advantage because by the time you reach 60, 70, again, the game's even harder. Things start to maybe break down or, or not function as well. So let's do what's easy 
when it's still easy. Why make this game of being healthy or losing weight harder than it has to be? Yes, so even though we are in Cartagena, Colombia, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, Costa Rica, Los Angeles, San Diego, New Jersey, New York, we can always do these small things consistently because they're so easy to do that it's kind of, it kind of not, it kind of makes sense not, it, it doesn't make sense not to do it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's life proof. Yeah, but we found something that was, um, that, that resonates with us. So the whole point of our program especially is to find things that resonates with you and so that you can actually do it. There you go, that's why we call it true for you. <laughs> it's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Please. All right, we'll see you in the supermarket and uh, we'll show you what we get. I'm thinking pineapples and lettuce. Maybe like a cantaloupe. Maybe a cantaloupe. Uh, cantaloupe. We just had a cantaloupe today, but there's always more room for more <laughs> cantaloupe. Take a little fruit shake. So Cartagena almost ex exactly looks like uh, South Beach, Miami. It's, it has a very striking re uh, resemblance. It's got the tall white buildings, it has the palm trees, very tropical vibe. Yeah, it's super chill too. Um, so, and it's kind of at the same time hectic like, like Miami Beach. Right. While it's like super chill because it's on the beach, it's still like a lot of people and a lot of people are trying to sell you stuff too. So That's one of the downsides, yeah. <laughs> but when you look at the big picture, they're just trying to make some money to feed their family and all that stuff, just like everybody else's. So, you know, there's a give and a take to everything and um, you make the most of it. Yeah, it all comes down to what you make. Walk down this far. Here we go. This is what I did the other day. Oh, okay, okay. I'm like, where are we? I don't recognize any of this. This is beautiful. There's a waterfront right here. Yep, so we're right on, we actually have two waterfronts by us. We're in uh, uh, Playas de Bocas Grande. I think I said that correctly. And it's kind of like a peninsula and we have water on both sides. So it's a really cool, really cool spot. Very busy, can get crazy, but it's a, it's a city. Yeah, but it's dope, it's dope. I definitely recommend coming to Cartagena, Colombia. And I definitely recommend just like walking around the city because it's so beautiful. So if you're worried about gaining weight, eating too much, whatever, we've been eating fried fish like every day, but at the same time we are walking like at least a mile every single day. So and we always, we always, we always wind up getting like a, a bike rental too. That's a great easy way to kind of get a, a landscape of the, the place that you're at. And then you can kind of decide, oh, let's go see more of this the next day or, or whatever. Just kind of you do your own city bike tour, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> wake up and just make them as soon as you wake up you don't have to worry about cutting them you don't have to worry about you know figuring out what you're gonna have it's already prepped for you and you can just get up and go half a pineapple this is the best one you can tell a pineapple is ready by the yellow how it smells and then we're just gonna mix it with cucumber simple So the catch 22 here kind of is, we want stuff to be easy or kind of play into our lazy mentality, but it's gotta be just that one degree, just that 1% of difficulty or interest there. Cause if something's too easy, we just go, oh, like I said in the beginning, it's not important. It's not gonna do anything. It's, it's, not, it's not worth my time essentially. So you have to figure out a way in your brain to make it worth your time. So from my perspective, I've always just been very interested in the human body and how things work. So when I drink something like a nutritious shake that's got pineapple, vegetables, and you know something else in it, I'm amazed by how much stuff is actually in those plants that's actually helping my body become a better body, you know, and giving me energy and replenishing all the stuff that my body needs in order to repair cells and muscles and tissue. That blows my mind. The fact that I can put something in my mouth and my hair grows and my, <laughs> my beard grows, by the way, um, just trimmed it. What do you think? I think I have some food in there. So if nothing else, 
Just remember this. If you know how to do something, yet you don't do it, you get the same result. So in other words, I don't really care how much you know. People tell me how much they know about these things all the time. That's great, I'm glad you're educated on the subject. I'm glad you know that this is good or this isn't good. But how often are you doing it? How many meals do you add a vegetable in? How many meals are you getting away from unprocessed stuff? So this is the difference between knowing something and having wisdom around it or, or understanding it to the point where you're actually doing it. That's what I mean when I say, get interested about it, get excited about it, see how this thing can be beneficial to you, or fun, or tasty, or delicious, or add your own spices and herbs, make it your own thing. That's why we call it true for you. It's gotta become true for you. It's gotta become your rule. It has to become your belief, because if it doesn't, you're just not gonna do it. So, take that into everything in life. What do you think you know, and then why aren't you doing that thing? that it's gonna open up a window to a discussion within yourself that maybe you're not ready for, and that's okay. And everybody's at their own point in life, and I totally respect that. You know, some people are just getting started, and some people are a lot further beyond that. I'm just trying to give some perspective, and Wendy is trying to give some perspective, and True For You Fitness is trying to give some perspective, so that you can go, oh wait a minute, I never thought about it like that, now I can go out and start eating one more vegetable. And again, if you're already doing this, if you're already having like a veggie with, you know, like a salad at lunch and like broccoli at dinner or like whatever, fantastic, keep it up, keep going. Um, don't overlook those things that you're doing because over time, they become easier, right? When you first learn how to write the letter A, very difficult as a, you know, a kindergarten, pre-kindergarten child, it's very difficult. But you do it over and over and over and over again and then you go, okay, now I can write full sentences, now I can write essays, I might even write a novel one day. And that's the same way every skill or every habit works. Once you start doing it, it becomes customary. And then you can bump it up 1%. And we can just keep doing that game every two to four weeks or so. Again, our 90-day program shows you exactly what you need to do to get there. I just read a great quote. Don't search for the moon. Search for the staircase that gets you to the moon. And that makes so much sense, right? There's no elevator to the top. We have to take the stairs. We have to do the actual work. We have to get out there and take action in some sense, or at least consider it. That's the first step. Start looking at what you're thinking about and how you're thinking about it. 